let's look at the following chemical reaction. It's a precipitation reaction. In this reaction, we put together two solutions to form a precipitate. The solutions are potassium iodide and lead 2 nitrate, and they form the precipitate lead 2 iodide. Now, how do we write down the chemical equation for this reaction? Well, it turns out there's a variety of ways in which we can do that. In this segment, we'll be discussing three different ways in which to write a chemical equation like this. The first way to write it down is in the form of a molecular equation. In the molecular equation, all the participating species are written as individual compounds. This is how it works. We have, on the reactant side, potassium iodide, written as one compound in the aqueous phase. We also see lead to nitrate as a single compound in the aqueous phase. On the product side, we find potassium nitrate as a single compound in the aqueous phase and the precipitate lead to iodide, which is a solid. So the molecular equation shows all the participating species in the right stoichiometry. However, what it does not show are the ions that are present in a solution. For instance, we know that potassium iodide splits into two ions, potassium ions and iodide ions. That is not shown in the molecular equation. Therefore, the molecular equation is a very compact way of writing precipitation reactions. In the complete ionic equation, we actually show explicitly all the ions that are present in the solution. So, for this particular reaction, we find potassium ions, we find iodide ions, we also find lead 2 plus ions and nitrate anions. And note that I have two nitrate anions for each one lead 2 plus. On the reactant side, we find potassium ions, nitrate ions, and the precipitate. The precipitate is still lead 2 iodide. It is a solid, it is not a strong electrolyte, so it does not split into ions. So it's written as a single compound. So, in the complete ionic equation, we write all the ions explicitly. All strong electrolytes are written as ions. Now note that on the left-hand side and the right-hand side of this equation, we find the potassium ion. We also find the nitrate ion on both sides of the equation. Why do we have duplicates of these ions? That is because they are so-called spectator ions. They are present in the solution both before and after. They do not partake in the actual reaction. They are just spectating. We can leave these spectator ions out, and then we arrive at the third way of writing this chemical equation. That's called the net ionic equation. Only the interacting ions are indicated in this equation. That is, the lead cation and the iodide anion. These are the interacting ions that form the product, which is lead to iodide. All the spectator ions are not shown in this way of writing down a chemical equation. Let's put this into practice. Let's look at the following reaction and write down the molecular equation, the complete ionic equation, and the net ionic equation. In this reaction, I have two solutions. One is potassium hydroxide. The other one is iron-3 nitrate. And they form a precipitate. The precipitate is iron-3 hydroxide. So let's first write down the molecular equation for this particular reaction. On the reactant side, we find two compounds, potassium hydroxide and iron-3 nitrate. They're written as single compounds. They're both in the aqueous phase. On the product side, we find the precipitate, which is iron-3 hydroxide, which is a solid, and potassium nitrate as a single compound that is fully dissolved and hence has the aqueous sign associated with it. In the complete ionic equation, we show all the ions that are present in the solution explicitly. So, on the reactant side, we find potassium ions, we find hydroxide anions, we find iron ions, and we find nitrate anions. Note again that we have three nitrate anions for each one iron 3 plus. So pay attention to the stoichiometry. On the product side, we find potassium ions, we find nitrate ions, and we find the precipitate. The precipitate, again, is a solid. It's not a strong electrolyte, so it's a single compound. 
Now, which ones of these ions are spectator ions? We find potassium ions both on the left and right side of the equation. We also find, again, nitrate anions on each side of the equation. So both potassium and nitrate are spectator ions. We can leave them out to arrive at the net ionic equation. In the net ionic equation, we only have those ions that interact. In this particular case, those are the hydroxide anions and the iron cations. We have three hydroxide anions for each one iron 3 plus, and they form the precipitate, which is iron 3 hydroxide. Again, all the spectator ions are not shown in the net ionic equation. Now here is an image of a stream that is polluted with iron 3 hydroxide. Iron 3 hydroxide is a yellowish precipitate. It is sometimes a byproduct of mining activities. You see here, it completely polluted this stream, which is a pretty frightful sight. 